So for this section, we're going to talk a little bit about what's a strategic approach to a hemorrhage case. When you're strategically approaching a hemorrhage case, you need to think about these major questions. You need to think about how many hemorrhages are there, what's the distribution of the hemorrhages, so where are they located, how old is the patient, and are there any other additional mitigating factors that you need to think about. When you're thinking about how many hemorrhages there are, you can generally lump it into one of two categories, whether you're looking at a single hemorrhage or whether you're looking at multiple hemorrhages. When you have single, far and away that uh, hypertension is going to be the most common trauma, you can certainly have single hemorrhages. Tumors and metastases, you can definitely have single, and then underlying vascular malformation are almost certainly single. When you're thinking about multiple lesions, metastases, trauma, amyloid, vasculitis, uh, press and other systemic uh, vascular abnormalities are all things that can cause multiple hemorrhages or hemorrhages in different locations uh, or otherwise evidence that there's been prior hemorrhages in other locations. You also want to think about the distribution. By far, uh, especially on CT, where you're going to see the vast majority of your hemorrhages is in central areas in the basal ganglia. Hypertensive hemorrhages most commonly occur in the pons, the thalami, basal ganglia. Uh, so those are the areas that you need to be thinking about. If you have involvement of the cerebral hemispheres, statistically you're still thinking about hypertension, but you've got to add uh, other things into that differential. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy, metastatic disease, primary tumors, trauma, the frequently seen involvement of the corpus callosum and gray white junction. Uh, versus the inferior frontal and temporal lobe, so along those bone interfaces. If you have regional involvement, you should think about radiation therapy. Here's a variety of examples of hemorrhage. So you can see this is susceptibility weighted imaging from a variety of different abnormalities. Uh, you can see amyloid here, and A, You've got a peripheral distribution, mostly at the gray white junction. Uh, these are actually fat emboli, so you see how fat emboli can have kind of a similar appearance to amyloidosis. Uh, here you see more involvement of the corpus callosum, and uh, the, uh, they're actually much finer, so emboli, like you might think about a very fine showering of, of disease. Diffuse axonal injury, you see some involvement along the body of the corpus callosum here. You see kind of a frontal distribution and a subcortical distribution. This is the classic distribution of hypertensive hemorrhages. Uh, involvement of the containment here, the basal ganglia, containment on this side, bilateral thalami, very classic for hypertensive hemorrhage. <clears throat> for cavernous malformations, you see uh, they can also have a kind of a diffuse distribution. If anything, one of the differences that you see here is there's a greater variation in size. So you see lesions that are larger. You would also expect to see more lesions on uh, or characteristic findings on T1 and T2 weighted imaging. Uh, this last example for radiation, you have hemorrhages that are predominantly confined to one side. This would be a patient that had selective radiation to one side of the brain, so possibly to treat a meningioma or another tumor. Um, you also should be thinking about the age of the patient. Um, when you have a pediatric patient, there's much more likely to be an underlying lesion, such as a vascular malformation or some underlying cause, venous infarct or underlying neoplasm. Adults less than 45, also you, you have to think about underlying abnormalities, vascular malformations, drugs, press, vasculitis, things like that. Neoplasm is getting a little bit more common, but uh, still it's not the primary consideration. As adults get to be greater than 45 years old, you should think about hypertension, neoplasm, uh, coagulopathies, Similarly, over 70, then you should be thinking more about amyloid angiopathy, which typically occurs in patients over 70 or above. Other things can be important for your history. You want to know what the patient's blood pressure is. When elevated, you think about hypertensive hemorrhages or press. Drug use, particularly cocaine and meth, are major causes of hemorrhage, particularly depending on uh, what your population is. Systemic vasculitis, so if you have a history of lupus or other vasculitis, you want to think about that. If you're being treated, uh, if you're anticoagulated, so you're on coumadin or heparin, 
Um, if you have hypercoagulable stats, you may still be prone to hemorrhage if you get DIC or platelet consumption. And uh, trauma is obviously another important piece of history that you, uh, that you may need to know. If you find a hemorrhage, you then need to think about what should you be doing next. Angiography is frequently going to be something that you're doing, whether it's CT or MR angiography or catheter angiogram. MRI is also going to be a key part of that. When you're doing MR, you want to think about doing your routine on contrast sequences, but also doing contrast to look for tumors with metastatic disease. MR, when you do it, you can do an MRA if it's appropriate. Think about doing blood specific sequences like susceptibility weighted imaging. This is an approach to imaging hemorrhages, which I borrowed from Dr. Hu, one of my colleagues. If you're looking at a patient who's over 45 and has features that are kind of classic for hypertension, you can almost presume that those are hypertensive and end your workup there. If you have patients who have any suspicious features, so they're young, have a normal blood pressure, a suspicious location, it should probably move on to CTA. If your CTA finds something, you're almost certainly going to go to catheter angiogram or surgery. If not, you may think about going on to MR, as we were saying. Here, I have just to finish up with this little joke for you. Mr. Potato Head, he's uh, kind of running into some memory problems, uh, but his hat is certainly going to stay in place. Now we're going to move on to some of our cases. 